Hey, it's kind of a gloomy, windy day here in mid-Michigan, um, but the weather certainly seems like spring or teaser spring uh, is in the air or just around the corner. So I'm going to spend some time today and maybe even a little time tomorrow um, talking about and reacting to the stuff that Mike did last time around. So welcome. Um, there's a little show intro that's about to happen that uh, will certainly fill you in on the awesomeness of the fist. And so you should watch that and I will meet you on the other side of that and we will start getting into this thing. Cool. It began as a dream with two kids in high school. There was a spark, magic, chemistry. Then life happened. But 30 years later, the fire was reignited. The band is back, better and badder than ever. They prolifically turn out new music, songs hitting the tops of the charts in various corners of the world. Rockin' You Since 82. So one of the things that I have to do as part of my process in responding to what Mike does is figure out what the hell I'm going to sing, if anything. Um, there are circumstances when I think it's appropriate to not have um, a whole lot of backing vocals or stuff get in the way. But I come from a really rich tradition of bands who do a lot with um, vocal harmonies, um, whether you want to think of it as being all sort of merged together as one voice. Um, I don't mean to say like the Andrews sisters is what we do, but it's not a horrible example. You know, you, we as listeners aren't necessarily concerned about one singer there as much as we are the combined effect of all of them. Um, certainly a band like Def Leppard, has a lead singer in Joe Elliott, but so much of Def Leppard's sound is made up of the combined effect of all of the vocals, usually in the choruses, um, but sometimes in pre-choruses too, you know, there's just a real rich vocal harmony there. Um, don't even get me started on the fact that a lot of that vocal harmony is also doubled on keyboards. Um, and that's not a bad idea for us to do either, you know. Um, we have been toying with the idea <clears throat> of having Rachel um, bring a keyboard onto the stage as well because I personally think there's some, um, some of our songs could just as well be done with her standing at a keyboard playing a bass line with her left hand and filling out some stuff with her right hand up in a higher register. And then there are some circumstances where, let's face it, she just needs to rock out with her bass. Anyway, point being that um, I need to figure out uh, if there's anything that I can do uh, in these songs, or in this song in particular, <clears throat> that is background vocal worthy. And so then when I do that, I'm like, all right, what does that need to sound like? So one spot is, um, just as Mike was tooling around with a second uh, set of lyrics, the second chorus, um, and singing that and roughing that in, I got the idea that when he sings this line, you know, mask is her disguise, or whatever it is, I could harmonize that just going into the chorus with this. And I like that. Mask is her disguise. And it's going to be a little fluky when he's doing... I'm going to be on this note against it, uh, which is real dissonant, and I like that. And then coming into that. I think it'll work as long as it's not super hot in the mix. I don't need to be like equal to what he's doing volume-wise um, because he is, of course, the front man. But I think that can work and add kind of a sinister sound. So I'm going to lean over real close to you as I press play on here and sort of show you what I'm talking about. Hi, just like that. There is no restraint her sanity is frayed. That kind of stuff. Let me actually back that up a little bit. Shush, Mike. Let me back that up a little bit so that I can get both parts of it. Where is he? All right. I think this should do it a little better. Try this on for size. Off. 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 And let's see what 
<clears throat> Let's turn him up a little bit. All right. Oh, too loud. Abnormal inside. This is what I'm talking about. Creature from hell. Sister's sister side. I don't know my own words. And what she is a saint. By night she takes a blade. There is no restraint. Her sanity is frayed. I think that can work. Just like his thing and he's there saying that can work. I think that can work really well um, and probably just add that to whatever he's singing in all of these uh, verses. So it's just a demonstration in that little spot how I need to think about what my part there is going to be. Um, sometimes it comes really easy. A song like Look Out, I just heard what I'm doing there. You know, those high things at the end of each line of the chorus verse. Damn it, neither one of us can seem to get verse versus chorus straight. Um, Viceville too was really easy to get that um, and we layered a lot of vocals into that. Um, middle Age Metal, super easy for me to find that although as I get older I'm not always so happy that I have to sing those high notes. Hot Mess was easy for me to find as well although again that one's so high um, I'm really happy uh, to pass that off, frankly to pass that off to Rachel on stage. Anyway, um, that's part and parcel of what I need to do. I need to figure out what my part is vocally in these songs um, and get that laid in. Um, and I've never really had any kind of pushback from Mike about what I do. Um, whether it's a song that I originate or one that he originates, anytime I've come to the table and said, this is what I'm singing here, it's always just worked really well. You know, there's never anything like, yeah, I don't like that there. That's not what I hear. If that is the case, you know, um, if Mike does have a problem with uh, what I'm singing or if he thinks it doesn't really fit or if he heard something different, certainly then he'll let me know. But that's a good example um, of me laying in some sort of background stuff. Um, we'll see if there's anything I feel like I need to add to the chorus itself. Anyway, um, I'm going to do a little more thinking and uh, then I'll be back. Cool. Okay, we're back with a slightly different view of the office. Um, I'm over here at the piano now um, because I want to just be able to place, place through, play through some things that relate to what Mike was talking about on the video about trying to find a chord progression for the break or bridge or what have you. Um, and right now at this point, I'm not even going to touch uh, the words, um, I don't, you know, he said, Scott's going to hate that. <laughs> and I don't hate what he came up with at all. Um, and twill seems a little twee, um, but I think it can be made to work. Um, but that's going to be for another thing. I just wanted to do a little bit here with some of the chords that he had. You know, he accused me of putting my uh, degree to work, and he's not wrong. Um, some of that comes from the philosophizing I did a couple of episodes ago, um, which if you haven't gone back and watched the earlier ones, um, we encourage you to. But, you know, I, I don't want to overthink what he's doing, um, and ultimately whatever is gonna happen as a chord progression during this break is something that he needs to be comfortable playing. Um, that's, um, as a composer, that's something that I come up against sometimes, especially when it's an instrument that I play mediocrely with mediocrity, badly would be maybe a better way to say it. Sometimes um, I'll have composition students come in for their lessons and um, uh, I'll need to make some sort of comment about what they're writing for marimba, and I always have to tell them, look, when I give you comments about your marimba writing, you have to take it with a huge grain of salt, because I am a mediocre marimbist at best, and so I'm constantly thinking, could I play what you wrote? And the answer is usually no. Um, but I always try to tell them, go ask someone who actually plays this instrument well. 
When it comes to the guitar, I don't have a clue. I mean, I have a little bit of a clue. I've had a guitar in my hands before we restarted the band uh, in the teens, in the early teens. Um, I was actually fooling around with the guitar quite a bit. Um, but I never got beyond just, you know, terrible. I mean, like there's not being able to play it and then there's playing it terribly. So I was playing it terribly. So I have no idea if um, what I come up with is something that he can play or something that's easy to play. As it stands, he was talking about a progression that went from E, and I'm just going to play the roots of these chords because I'm not sure uh, what his voicings are or whatever, but he was talking about something that goes on E, and if you're looking at the keyboard, if you can see it, of course, I'm on an E flat because we tuned down half a step. So he's talking about going from E and then to B flat, and I like that. I like that, um, that dissonance. You know, that all that like mimics what I was doing um, with the dissonance in one part uh, just prior to this with my background vocals. I said, that's going to give her that really harsh dissonance there. So in some respects, that mir this chord progression mirrors uh, that nicely. Um, nevertheless, so he's going from E, f e to B flat to B. And then he said G minor, which I like. Um, and then he said something about going to B minor from that. And that's close and interesting. And then F sharp, um, which would be this. And I don't know if he's thinking about that as F sharp major, F sharp minor, um, whatever. But that's another interesting movement um, right there. And then he was just dropping it back to E. And no, sorry. Um, he was dropping it back to F. I have to play it as an E. So once again, per him, E, B flat, then B. He said G minor, and then B minor, and then F sharp, and then E. Okay, so I like a lot about that. The one thing I wasn't super crazy about um, was that you get those two B rooted chords right together. But I like a lot of these, in, in music we call it a tritone, um, I like a lot of these tritones and then the half steps between, there's a lot of dissonance here, here, you know, there's a lot to work with there that I think delivers the feel. Um, as he was pontificating so much in the last episode about the feel of this and the nature of the song and where it's going or maybe where Bloody Mary comes from, um, I think a lot of these intervals play into that feel really well. Of course, I can't leave well enough alone. So if he's comfortable playing those chords or if in the interim between him filming that and now me filming this, he's come up with something more workable, more power to him. Um, what I ended up coming up with was a um, sort of a repetition, a sequence of events that would go from, and now I have to just talk about it in the notes I'm playing, E flat to A to B flat. Those are the three things he said going from E uh, to B flat to B, so I kept that, but I went down instead. get us through eight measures and dumped out into some place that is maybe hard to get back from. So what I'm playing, E flat, A, B flat, D flat, C, F sharp, G, B, B flat. So he would need to think and finger up a half step for each of those. So E, B flat, B, uh, D, D flat or C sharp, then G, A flat, then C, B would be the chords he would think about them. And I don't know, um, I could also imagine some sort of like noodly um, part that probably Frank would play as Mike is thinking about singing. Mike could maybe play all those chords and then some noodly part that would accentuate that over top. So like here's the E and 
then going to the um, B flat, going to the B, um, going to the C, uh, thinking, going to the C, um, going to like the C sharp or D flat. in total we only need eight and that's why I say dumping us off on that I'm playing B flat but he'll be like courting a B dumping us off on that B chord doesn't really do us much in terms of getting back to anywhere that's useful in the song there may be a section that follows that that could do something I don't know what but those are my thoughts about those chords if what he's got is stuff that works for him um, then I think that's great, and I think it delivers the feel well. Um, this is something that I came up with that was a version of that, but then spins off so that it's more in the nature of a sequence um, and maybe not quite so random sounding. So that was a long bit. Uh, I'm going to get out of here and get some work done and uh, come back and tackle a little something probably tomorrow. So as he says, uh, it'll happen real fast. Like, I'm going to leave now. Uh, and when I get back, I'll be in a different shirt. It'll be a while for me, but for you, it'll be just like that. All right, I said we'd be back, and here we are. I'm looking at lyrics, and I know one of the things Mike really wants my feedback on is the break uh, that he was working on. The dark inside from horror past, sate the lust will never last. Find fulfillment it shall not be, tortured soul sadistically. There's a lot there that I like. But before I get to that, <laughs> and I will get to that, before I get to that, I need to address my take on the chorus, which I'm going to back off for you now and play just a little bit and just give you some of my impressions. Let's see where we are. We're coming up to it. Here's where we need to be. One of my feelings about this chorus is that there's a lot of space. Um, I feel like we've been driving along really well in the verses, I will use the right word. I feel like we've been driving along really well in the verses. <clears throat> but now it feels like it really just kind of slows down um, here at the chorus. I'm going to admit that a big part of that could be due to um, the fact that there's not much there yet. There's no drums there yet. All Mike is doing is strumming open chords so that he can get the harmonic structure there that he wants. Nevertheless, <clears throat> each verse is 16 measures and the chorus is 16 measures. It, I feel like it's really long for a chorus and the ideas that are delivered in the chorus are uh, important. She's Bloody Mary, murder in high heels. She's Bloody Mary, terror act conceals. You know, what a good person she's supposed to be. She's Bloody Mary, stalks her prey at night. Bloody Mary gores her delight. But I feel like that takes a long time to get through. And there's a lot of open space in there that leaves, um, it doesn't leave anything, it, it, but it sort of stops the forward motion, especially since the second part of that 
verse has that cool do 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 I always have to do the fingers with that do 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 bass line that Mike got in there. So once again. Space. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, a full empty measure. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. I just feel like those full measures of nothing happening really slow down the the feel and the pace, and therefore maybe the menace. <clears throat> this is all not knowing what Mike had planned to do in there. This is all without me having provided even scratch drums for that part. But I thought about inserting some lyrics as one of those choruses that's like the sort of chant, um, interspersed kind of chorus, where Mike sings the main intent, and then like a chant thing goes on as background vocals in between that maybe just has some commentary on what Mike is singing. So, one of the words here is wrong but I can't come up with a better one right now and I don't have the time uh, to do anything more with it right now. And you're just watching me fart around on the computer and I understand that that's frustrating. Sorry. Here we go. So, chorus again. <clears throat> Psychopathic maniac. Gruesome as a heart attack. Heart is not the right word. Never sleeping, never spent. No repent. So with the exception of the word heart attack in there, I like that. Psychopathic maniac, gruesome as a mm attack. And I, I can't come up with anything there except heart to be continued on that. But to me, that feels like there's a little commentary that gives you a little more of what a monster she is. And it also fills out some of those empty spots that exist as empty spots right now. <clears throat> I have no idea what the melody for that stuff sounds like. And since I'm the one who would likely have to sing it, it's probably up to me to come up with. <clears throat> Psychopathic maniac. Gruesome as a heart attack. Never sleeping, never spent. No repent. So it could be something like that. That's way away from what Mike was working on but it's something that had been sort of eating at me. You know, I let these songs run almost like as a background program and, and just the space in the chorus has been kind of eating at me. And I finally came up with something that I think works might not be what he has in mind. And again, everything is so thin there right now. Anyway, it might not matter. Maybe he was thinking he was going to in there. No idea, but that's what I got for that. I'm going to work just a little bit with what um, he gave me for that break, and then I'll be back. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. Okay. This is exactly me overcooking a song. I'm looking at Mike's break lyrics. The dark inside from horror past, sate the lust, twill never last. Find fulfillment it shall not be, tortured soul, sadistic glee. If he wants my opinion, I like the first line and the last line of that. I like the dark inside from horror past, and I like tortured soul, sadistic glee. The middle stuff, I like the intent of sate the lust. I don't hate twill, but it feels a little 
twee. Um, and the fine fulfillment it shall not be. I didn't mean to rhyme that with twee. <laughs> I don't know. I've been looking at both Rhyme Zone and thesaurus.com for like 20 minutes now. And now I think I'm over baking this. So all I did was go through and rearrange the middle two lines into something that is much likelier to be harder to remember and probably tougher to sing. Instead of sate the lust, twill never last, I wrote bloody gorge to break her fast. And then instead of fine fulfillment, it shall not be, I wrote rank insatiate killer queen. So the dark inside from horror past, bloody gorge to break her fast, rank insatiate killer queen, tortured soul sadistic glee. I have no idea if that's better. It's probably worse. It's probably overbaked. This is one of those lyrical spots where I feel like Mike did exactly what I do and what you've seen me do in past episodes. Watch the past episodes. Where I just barf stuff onto the page, bleh, and then spend some time working with it, refining it. That's what we saw Mike do in the last episode. He barfed some stuff on the page, and then sat there and worked with it. You watched the process, or you should. Um, and you didn't watch me do anything because I'm just like typing and like looking and how do you pronounce insatiate? Is it insatiate or insatiate? Is it really an adjective? It is. Do you, is it insatiate or insatiate? It depends on whether you're British or, or American. I, whatever. That's what I've got for that. And I was just over at the piano. I'm trying to figure out, like, I was writing down notes in the chords that I had played and seeing if I could, like, find a melody through there. And I can't. And I think I'm being too much of a composer right now. That's the problem. I'm not being a songwriter right now. I'm being too much of a composer. So this needs to be out of my wheelhouse for right now, or at least for this episode. I'm not... I'm not anti what Mike put together. I don't necessarily think what I put together is better. I'm perfectly happy to admit that what I put together is worse. This needs to run as a background program for a while. Or it needs to not be my thing and it needs to be his thing. And whatever he's happy singing, I'm happy having in the song. You know, that's what it comes down to, too. What's he happy singing? Is he going to be happy trying to remember Bloody Gorge to break her fast rank and say shit killer queen? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. I got to be done with that. Um, I wanted to address the idea that, um, that we could use an intro. But I'm going to take a quick break. Um... Okay, I'm back. Whew. Uh, apparently my urge to go to the bathroom right there was so great that I accidentally clicked off uh, before I was even done speaking. So, whew. I think the song needs an intro. Um, and I think what the intro ought to be is the funky bass line that Mike uh, introduces in the second go around of the uh, chorus. Verse, you knew I meant verse, you knew I meant verse. Um, the do -de 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 -de. I think that that can start with like, not like a loving you intro, but I think it can start with just like a bass note or two, like bow. Can you get bass feedback? <laughs> Maybe not that. Maybe it just creeps in with that bass. But I think that funky bass line should be the intro. Um, I don't know. And so maybe four measures of that, like creeping in and like a little drum lead in thing. And then maybe four measures of like some big, like just four easy guitar chords to get us into 
the beginning of the song and then we're to you know the beginning of the verse the beginning of the verse damn it not the chorus so i think that's what we need anyway um that's all i got for right now i am close to needing to get down to class and uh it's already friday so i've got to get all this stuff uh, sent over to mike so that he can get it put together add anything maybe maybe not i don't know and we'll just figure out where we are um for the next episode so in the meantime do all of the things hit all of the subscribes the little bell the liking commenting we would love to know what you think please we got some nice comments on one of the earlier episodes so keep that coming um tell us what you think of the process um tell us that we're just overbaked twits um i mean really don't tell us that but you know tell us Tell us what you like about it. Tell us if you're like, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem really, you know, like complain at us. We're fine. We have thick skin. We can take it. Um, and uh, yeah, and tell people, share it around. Sharing is good. Uh, we like sharing. So all the things and uh, that's it for me this time. So I will see you um, on some sort of flip side and um, we'll see where we go with this uh, once Mike gets it in and sits on it for a little while. All right, rock.